Well, hello there. And I want to introduce um, Dr. Patrick McGrath from NoCD. Um, hey, everybody. We're going to be talking about what NoCD OCD teletherapy is. Um, I had a lot of questions about this in lots of my groups and on my page. And so I reached out and asked him to come on. I thought it would be great. A lot of you submitted questions already. And so I have a whole list of questions, a lot of very practical, like concrete questions. Um, but I thought it would be better to start with just for those of those people that are watching this, what is no CD teletherapy? And so if you can give us a little bit of background on that, that would be amazing. Sure. So first of all, OCD, of course, one of the most disabling conditions in the world, uh, under-recognized. One in 40 people meet criteria for OCD at some point in time in their life. The World Health Organization has said OCD is one of the most top 10 disabling disorders in the world. So, and our founder, Stephen Smith, went through being misdiagnosed multiple times before finally meeting a specialist who treated OCD who had a seven-month waiting list and was charging $300 an hour for therapy, which was very difficult for him at the time in college. Luckily, a family friend helped pay for it. So that was kind of the impetus of developing no CD so that people would have access to care and that they would be... Uh, able to see a therapist who was specially trained in OCD and the utilization of exposure and response prevention therapy, which is the treatment of choice. It's kind of the gold standard of therapy for obsessive compulsive disorder. So that's what we do now through the teletherapy service at NoCD. We provide teletherapy for people with OCD, utilizing exposure and response prevention therapy through our uh, platform. And we also then have messaging that we can do Monday through Friday with our patients as well, too. And then online are our therapy tools that people can utilize. They can record obsessions, compulsions. They have tools like loop tapes or the ability to draw things or have a library of videos or pictures that might be triggering for them that they can utilize in their therapy, their, their ERP. And then that we have our community feed as well, too, where they can get support from other people in the OCD community as well through through our feed. So there's a lot of things that are available to individuals with obsessive compulsive disorder through no CD, as well as their families uh, for support as well. too. Yeah, and that's a great introduction. And it is exciting because it is giving access to, to really good quality care to people who didn't have it before at an affordable rate. Um, I'm getting some questions already. I had a question really quick and then I'll, I'll move to this one. Um, so for all those things, as far as messaging and a lot of the app qualities, can, can a child use that? Or is that for people who are 18 and older? Yeah. So we're working right now on, um, we have the ability to lock things for people who are under 18 so that they don't have necessarily access to all the feed stuff because some of the things that come on with adults with the feed might be more provocative for, for, people who are younger. So we want to make sure that we have some limits on that. Uh, we do say that anyone between the ages of six and 12, we want their parents involved in all of the sessions because it's important for the parents to learn about what they can do to support the OCD therapy. And for somebody who's 13 to 18, we want to be sure that the parents at least involved in the diagnostic and the education piece of NoCD. And then going forward, they can kind of work out with the therapist what their level of involvement would be. But we know from research and my own clinical background, uh, if you don't inform a parent about some of the exposure and response prevention exercises you're doing, parents will look at some of the things we assign sometimes and say, you're torturing my child. I hate you. And we're never talking to you again. I, really? I had a student once who who didn't call a parent uh, from, from our IOP program and tell them what we were doing. And the next morning, the voicemail I had from that parent mm -hmm. was, uh, was not the most pleasant voicemail I've ever received. And I remember looking at my student going, you, you didn't you didn't tell the parent what we were doing, did you? And she's like, oh, I forgot. I said, oh, I know you forgot because, uh, boy, you should hear this voicemail I just got. You know, our, our goal with ERP is never to torture your children. That's that's not what we're trying to do. Our goal is to get your children to learn that they can handle the discomfort that they're experiencing. And we know this, that parents with best of intentions, unfortunately, provide things that actually help OCD and not get in the way of OCD. So your child may say, hey, just one more time, could you, I promise this is the last time, but one more time, could you just tell me that I locked the door? 
okay, just this last time. And then, then an hour later, okay, no, really, this is the last time. I just need to know, you know. And the more that you give that reassurance, the worse the OCD actually gets. So as difficult as it is, we have to have people sit with that discomfort and learn, okay, I can handle that. I can handle it. Yeah, and it's great that you work with families because that is such a integral part of- well, You have to, yeah, you have yeah. to. You, yeah. Therapy won't be successful without family involvement uh, in, in these types of situations. Even with adults, we'll bring in spouses yeah. and parents and things like that as well too. That, that kind of thing is essential and we have the ability to do that and our therapists will work with that. Yeah, that's great. Um, so Carly wanted to know, at what age can a child benefit from teletherapy? Uh, first of all, Carly, awesome little picture of yourself with a mask on there. I think that's that's wonderful. Okay. Nice job on that. Uh, you know, it, it can work for very young children. It, it really can. And I think there's a few benefits to teletherapy that I've really noticed. And and I didn't know about this, of course, until we were kind of all in. And I joined NoCD in January, and I'd been doing all intensive levels of therapy, you know, PHP, IOP, residential level. But uh, when I would see people individually, I would really rely on them telling me what was going on at home. And I had to have the story from the parents about what was happening and, and the kid either not wanting to talk to me about it or something, or, or it would hard, maybe get them hard to role play it out. But now I'm in the home with people and all it takes is a flip of the camera to see, here's the doorknob that they don't want to touch because they think there's a germ on it. Or here's the stove knob that they broke because they kept turning it to make sure the stove was off or or here's where the corner where they go and pray every time they have an intrusive thought and that's why they're in the corner right now because this this to them is the right spot to be to say the prayer they think god hears them the best in this corner something like that. whatever ocd has decided it which an ocd can decide just about anything uh, that it wants to of course so it's so nice to actually intimately be in those kinds of experiences with people right there in their home where especially with kids so much of the ocd occurs because there are many children who will uh, not have a lot of ocd experiences either in school or at friends houses or something like that because they know that their family has to like them but they also know that their friends and people at school don't have to like them so if they do something odd or strange at school they could get judged so they might hold it in but then once they walk in the door at home it's like the explosion of everything they didn't do throughout the day so now i can really be there in that home experience and i can work with the child on resisting doing all the compulsions but i can also work with the parents on not providing all the safety behaviors that they have been providing up until this point in time yeah so is um another person asked is there criteria and i think that's a good piggyback question is there an age um a starting age that you guys would work with or do six and up and the reason for that is the validated measures that we utilize for diagnosis which is the diamond screener um uh, dave tolan a friend of mine developed it out at the institute for living it, that starts at age six. So we want to make sure that we're using a validated measure for OCD to get a true diagnostic picture. Uh, I don't want anyone to think that we would just willy nilly the diagnosis. And I want everyone to know too, we don't diagnose everybody who comes to us with OCD either. So we are not here just to grab patients and say, Every, you have OCD and you have OCD. You know, sometimes OCD is the buzzword for people. You know, oh, you do something more than once, you must have OCD or, or something like that. Uh, no, that's not the case. Sometimes it's uh, trichotillomania or hair pulling, or it's maybe a tick disorder or something like that. So we want to get a true good diagnostic picture and our measures currently go to age six. So that's where we'll start. Okay, that makes sense. Now, if somebody has anxiety and not OCD, um, mm -hmm. would they still be able to use the teletherapy? No, uh, they they could, not with us. I mean, we okay. would refer them out to somebody else. We'll, we'll give at least three uh, referrals then to providers. But we're right now very much limited to obsessive compulsive disorder has to be in the mix of the diagnoses. Okay. And actually, somebody else had asked, um, and I'm skipping around now because I'm trying to figure out what her name was, um, uh, Eustachia. She said, will they, will they also do a screening test for OCD? If a formal diagnosis has not yet been made. So I thought you kind of oh, spoke yeah. already. We'll, we'll be the ones who can make the formal diagnosis. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I got very interested in how you train the therapist and how they become members of your team. 
Absolutely. Everybody first goes through a screening process with uh, a team that we have that is looking for therapists across the country. They then go through an interview with myself or uh, Ted, who's my operations director, also our chief operating officer, Larry. If we feel that they've got a good personality and we like the, the kind of drive that they have and the motivation to work with people with OCD, we have a uh, 15 or so hour training experience for our therapists where we go over you know, no CD policies and procedures, what is obsessive compulsive disorder, how do you utilize cognitive behavioral therapy and exposure and response prevention therapy. We go through the technology, helping make sure people are set up to do teletherapy and everything correctly. Uh, we have some online trainings for some of that as well too that our therapists go through. We can record that they've done all of that training. We have a quiz that every therapist has to pass before we even let them see any of our patients to be sure that they have a proficiency in our technology as well as OCD and ERP. And then if somebody's going to do child and adolescent work, we have two further hours of training that they have to go through as well, too, where we do more specifics on working with families and children and, and kind of the special needs that we might see with, with that kind of a population as well. So uh, it's, an, it's an extensive training that, that people go through. In addition to that, I personally do three hours of group supervision a week with all of our therapists who, so any therapist at any time is welcome to attend any of those supervision sessions and run cases past me and get my opinions on things. And uh, there are times that I've sat in on cases as well, too. If things appear to be a little bit difficult or something like that, I will come in and I will join a session to offer some tips or guidance as well, too. Unlike... Wow. Nice. <laughs> uh, unlike a lot of teletherapy companies that are out there, and I'm not going to name any names, but I know some of them that say, all right, you're on our platform. Uh, hopefully we'll never hear from you again. Just take the patient, see them and do what you need to do. We are amazingly invested in the therapist who work for us as well as the patients that they are seeing. And I want to make sure that it's a good and successful experience for people. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great for therapists to get like such great intensive supervision. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not uh, there's not a lot of other therapists out there who have three hours of access to someone who's been treating OCD for 20 years for their career. I know. You know so uh, <laughs> not, to, not to toot my horn, but, uh, yeah, you know. That's impressive. That's like, that's motivation for therapists out there to join because that's, that's really nice. Well, that has been part of it and why some therapists have joined our network and not others because of the uh, extensive amount of supervision that we provide to people. So Yeah. Um, let's see. I got this question actually quite a lot in my my notes here too. Will you consider providing international therapy? So I have a lot Absolutely. of yep. Um, yep. Canadians actually asked a lot. I have in my audience a lot of UK and Australia. Mm -hmm. um, any any plans for that? Absolutely. We we totally have plans for that. Uh, first, we're going to get into all 50 states and, and the District of Columbia. I saw one about uh, New Mexico. We, we will be getting there. Um, I have... I. You, you should see my schedule just today of in interviews after this. I am have an afternoon of interviewing therapists across the country. So uh, yeah. we, we are in a massive, massive interviewing streak right now. Uh, we continue to add more trainings to accommodate more people coming into our network. And uh, we're, we're really excited to, by the end of the year, our goal is to be in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. And... Something unique about NoCD is that we continuously work on getting more insurance providers into our network as well. So currently, probably 10 to 15 U.S. cities and the surrounding area is where 95% of the OCD specialists in the United States are at. Uh, we're going to be a game changer in that. We are going to be in all 50 states. And because it's teletherapy, it doesn't matter where in the state you are. We're, as long as you have an internet connection, we're going to be able to see you and help you with evidence-based therapy. And for soon, at a cost that is affordable and isn't involving a four-hour back-and-forth drive and then paying a $300 out-of-pocket expense for that. Yeah, so so exciting for so many people. Um, Adam said, coming in late to this discussion. Hi, Adam. It's good to see you here. What is a link to Dr. McGrath's organization? Thank you for doing this. Happy to support. Sure. Um, and I will uh, leave a link um, once we right. get off. I didn't leave a link. Yeah. Uh, you can go to nocd.com or treatmyocd.com. 
and and okay. or and everyone the app is free so if you want to just check out the app and the community and even see what the exercises look like you can set up some of your own exposure exercises or if your child has ocd and you want to program some in just go to google play or ios and download the app it's totally free and it's free to use our therapy tools that are built into the app and and um, you could check out the community. You can also go to our No CD YouTube page and subscribe. And there's where we've recorded our webinars that we have done. And you can kind of watch the webinars and watch me do Q and A's with people. And uh, sometimes I do them alone. Sometimes I have uh, fellow therapists join. And we also now have added a Diversity Matters series. So once a month we do a diversity focused topic in OCD. I'm excited that on uh, the 19th of, of this month, we are doing OCD and autism. And that is going to be our focus. So if any of you if you have a child who's on the autism spectrum and you're kind of wondering what's autism versus where's OCD, uh, we have some experts coming in to speak about what's the link between OCD and autism. So I'm really yeah. excited about that. That'll, so be, that'll really be That's uh, Wednesday night from 7 to 8 central time. And again, if you download the app, you'll get our push notifications uh, for, for when that occurs as well. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Adam, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. N-O-C-D. Mm -hmm. .com. So yeah. um, it's pronounced no CD. A lot of people ask all the time. So it is pronounced no CD, but for an acronym, it's N-O-C-D.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, got another question. Um, is it a nine week, two times per week setup? How does a kid yep. graduate or can it be ongoing? So it's nine weeks. We do a diagnostic and then we front load therapy in the first three weeks. We do two sessions a week for the first three weeks. Those are an hour long. Then we go to once a week at half an hour long. And then we go into, so that's our get better phase where we really are focused on helping people get better, apply exposure and response prevention therapy to the work that they're doing. And then our stay better phase is up to two times a month. We will meet for half an hour. And we can continue that for a very long time, kind of indefinitely for people to continue to be a support to you and to your family and to your loved one with OCD. Along the way, we also, through the app, have a messaging capability. So our therapist will message you once per day, Monday through Friday, in the active get better phase, and then as needed in that stay better phase. So... Well, who, are they, who are they messaging in that case? Because these are all parents listening. Are yeah. they messaging the parent or the child? Yeah. However the app is set up, we can, okay. you know, some, some parents have said, you can message my teenager, you know, that's fine. And, and they, uh, they can set it up that way. But if it's younger, we can message the parent and then they can ask questions and we can be there to support or offer some guidance along the way as well too. That's amazing. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. I did get a question. I don't know where it is in my list, but um, when, when I'm seeing questions that are relevant to our conversation, I'm going to just bring them up. Uh, she asked, do you have to do two two times a week in the beginning? She has a child who she feels like has already been pretty advanced, um, uh, yeah. more maintenance. Yeah, um, so far we do. Um, at this point in time, that's how we, we have it set up. And uh, it, we're, we're still really collecting data on our protocol. I mean, we have a lot of data support, first of all. The, this program was run through independently a research study at Columbia University. So, and they found a 40% reduction in OCD symptoms. And our current data collection shows us at about a 45% reduction in OCD symptoms. Uh, what might happen in that situation, even if the child has already done a lot of work, those first three weeks where it's twice a week for just for those first three weeks might really be on just helping someone maintain whatever gains they've had in previous therapy. And then as we step down to the once a week at 30 minutes and, and then going to twice a month at 30 minutes, it's just more guidance and maintenance than anything else. So um, at, at the moment we, we are trying to keep people to the protocol as much as possible, just because okay. that's really what the research has been supporting. That makes sense. Um, Angie asks, how old is too old to get good results? My son is 13. Uh, the oldest patient I treated was 87, and he did very well after having OCD for 70 years. So <laughs> I think your son is in the age range that we could uh, we could help. No problem. Okay. Um, what if uh, the kid and the therapist are not a good match after first or second meeting? Uh, if that's the case and the therapist agrees, we can take a look at other therapists in the network to see if there might be somebody else in that state who's licensed to see that person uh, might be a better fit. So. Okay. So that's nice if there's some flexibility. Oh, yeah. 
-hmm. I'm going to move to some of the questions that people had submitted prior to this. And then if anyone's watching and they have questions, feel free to keep posting. Um, Carolyn said, can they meet a patient where they're at? Um, actually, I already answered that one, or you answered that one. That was the maintenance one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shireen said, um, trying to use no CD, but there was no providers in New Mexico. And we We're getting there. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, a lot of parents were telling me that they're on a list, and will you guys notify people as new providers pop up in their state? Yeah. Okay, so they can get on a list. Mm -hmm. um, someone's asking, which is the younger age you treat? And he already six. said six. Yeah, mm -hmm. so six. Um, Heather said, are you working on getting on with other insurance companies, especially Cigna? All the time. Yeah, we're constantly working on getting new panels. And sometimes, like, some insurance companies will try us out in one or two states to see how it works, and then they will go national with it. So we're seeing that uh, already with a couple of companies. So you might say, you might have a friend, well, they take Cigna in this state, but why don't you take it here? It might be a, a trial period that we're going through with them to make sure that all the kinks are worked out for billing and everything like that. Uh, some insurance companies don't want to open this up nationally right away until they, they've seen it work in a state or two. They've worked out whatever the kinks are for billing or anything, if there are any, just to make sure that all policies and, and procedures are in place and everything. And then they will open it up once they have a green light to go. And it looks like that all of all of the procedures are working well. So Okay. And Angie said she should have asked about Alaska. <laughs> Alaska is one of the 50 states. So yes, that is a goal of ours. Uh, if anyone knows a therapist in, say, Alaska, Hawaii, New Mexico, someone you think would be maybe a good fit for OCD or is looking to expand and work with OCD, please do uh, have them go to treatmyocd.com and reach out to our care team and let them know. Uh, then we'll have Don or Ben, who's on our, our recruitment team, get in touch with them to see about setting up an interview with us. So. We yeah, and it come like referrals. A, Absolutely. Yeah, and it seems like it's a good thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see. Rita said, this is kind of a technical question, but I, I'll just read all of them. Um, I'd be interested in learning if they have plans to send a receipt after each appointment. Currently, she has to call the rep after each appointment yeah. to get a bill. Yeah, um, we that that should be built in. We, we are going to transition from the current uh, medical record that we're using uh, to to a different system that hopefully will be more user-friendly in those types of areas. So uh, give it a little bit more time, but we're, we're working on that. Um, there's, there's two important things for NoCD. The user experience on, the, on your end for any of you who are family members or patients, and then the therapist experience to make sure that everything's user-friendly for them too. And unfortunately, most EHRs or electronic health records are built with a medical practice in mind and not a behavioral health practice in mind. So we've kind of decided that we need to take the lead in figuring out how do you build something specifically for a behavioral health practice. Uh, so we're working on that end. So uh, give us another month or two and we might have some exciting news on, on something like okay. that. So. Yeah, you know, no, just sure. It's a very great out. question. And um, I appreciate that question, and you know that's something that I will take as we're working on our our build of things uh, to make sure that that's something that's available to everyone. That that there could be something automatic. I know that we've had those discussions already about how is it, how do you make this the ease easiest possible for a patient or a patient family to just have access to that billing, um, and, and it's yeah. you have. If you've never built something like this, you have no idea the amount of time it takes. To oh, I can imagine. Stuff. I can it's, imagine. It's, yeah. uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. We've, we've had many a meeting in the last few months about these types of things, but uh, we're working on that. All right. Um, thank you, Adam, for sharing this on your page. Just want to say thank you to that. Um, does no CD prescribe SSRIs? We do not. We do not have a telepsychiatry portal as of yet. Uh, again, something potentially down the road that we would look at, but we don't have that right now. What we do have, though, is Dr. Jamie Foisner, who is our chief medical officer, so we can run things past him and get recommendations and then be able to give you what those recommendations are. So if you're seeing somebody in your own home state, even if it's a GP, uh, he might be able to at least say, here's what I would recommend in this kind of situation and see if your, your GP or somebody would follow up on that. Okay. Um, Susie has a specific question. Do you have a trial period with the insurance emblem GHI beacon? Um, hold on. Let me, since we're on here right now, let me send John a message. He is our insurance person. So I can do that live while we're here. 
Okay. Let me just send him something. So just give me one moment here and I can pull that up. Um, everyone should go visit Adam's page two on iparent101.com. Um, what was the, what was that insurance again? Um, it was emblem slash GHI beacon here. I'll just pull it up here. You know, we've been really trying to get Susie a provider. Um, that has been an ongoing goal of mine <laughs> to help her connect with services. Susie, I just sent something to John, our uh, insurance person. So um, if, if I don't hear back from him while we're live today, I will whatever that answer is, I will get to Natasha. And Natasha, if you could get that. That to would Susie, be great. great. Yeah. Okay. She's in the Bronx. And so if anyone knows of anyone, a provider that does ERP in the Bronx, I am waiting back for an email from someone who is doing a program in Fordham, but we've been okay. searching for a provider for her. You can also go to, um, if, I mean, you can also check the International OCD Foundation website if no CD isn't yet with uh, Emblem. No, she okay. right, okay. <laughs> we have gone down. She's going yeah, down. All right. All yeah, right. But we're well, someone with insurance. So that's the tricky okay. one. Uh, yeah, I'll just see what I hear from John then. I'll let you know. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Christina, is there a link that I can get more info? I am so sorry I didn't leave a link. Um, I will definitely update that. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me see if I can put it in the comments as well. Yeah. And hopefully that will go in there. Um, scheduled this a while ago. So there we go. OCD.com is right there. Mm -hmm. And I will add a link to the, the topic when we get off. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm going to go back to my list really quick. Lyndall said, any chance of getting a no CD therapist who treats in Montana? I've yes. filled in mm -hmm. request forms a few times, never heard back. So, yep, uh, that's a goal of ours is, like I said, to get into every state by the end of the year is something we're very, very actively shooting toward. So, um, we're, we're working on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you both. Got to run. We'll listen to the rest later. Also, Patrick, happy to share user feedback to help you build the tech. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, please, please feel free. Um, I, I'll give you my email address. It's just my name. It's Patrick McGrath at nocdhelp.com. So if you have any ideas or anything, anybody could reach out. I'm happy to happy to help. Yeah. So um, going back, Taryn had a question. I actually got a lot of these uh, about you expanding globally. So I did. I wasn't sure what it when your plan is to go globally or what your timeline is for that first it's to get into all 50 states okay. and then so that would be something that wouldn't happen until 2021 we will finish 2020 with um with with getting into all the states in the u.s okay. and then we'll, we'll we'll build from there at least there's a thought to do it which is really oh, yeah. good oh so. yeah there's there's absolutely a, a thought to do it. Mm -hmm. okay yeah um how do you vet the therapist so kind of went over a little bit of that earlier, but there there is uh, a several interview process and then a training experience as well, too. And um, there's even once somebody is a therapist with us, we, we do have kind of an internal scale that we utilize for for taking a look at is everyone meeting benchmarks that we want? Uh, what can we do to help train somebody up a little bit more if they would need something? So uh, we don't we don't just say once you're on our network, everything's good. You're here forever. We we have rules and regulations we want people to follow. And uh, well, if if someone isn't going to do that, then we have to take a look at what we do next with that person. So yeah. Okay, Marie said, do you have a list of states you're currently in, um, or do they fill um, that form? Go to the care team. They they will have the most updated uh, because you know every every day the it depends on how many therapists we have in a state where we go live and everything. So um, our care team, if you if you go to nocityhelp.com and talk to our care team, they'll be able to tell you exactly what states we're live in as of today. Okay. So and it might be worth doing because then if they get into your, if they talk to your care team, they can get on a list. Mm -hmm. when they get on a list and then they can get notified when you have a provider. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that might be a really good thing to do. Um, Carmel said, are there any plans to provide training for no CD therapists in OCD with PANDAS PANS patients? Yeah, when well, we do a bit with our uh, our initial training that we do, I've done a lot of work with the PANS community actually in spoken on conferences and things like that. So uh, that is that is something that uh, if there's a, a particular case that I'm happy to join in even on supervision and help somebody with as well too. I would like to see us after this big project with the medical record is up, you know, then we'll take a look at some more special populations. So I do want to see us do 
uh, some more specific trainings in diversity, specific trainings in autism, PANS. So those would be areas that I will look toward in the future. But we we absolutely touch on it. Our, our therapists know about it and they know they have access to me to go over any specific cases. Okay. I'm not sure she's talking about me or you. Hi, I've just watched your video on impulsive thoughts. I'm going to try it and hopefully oh, it will help. Good. Yeah. Um, wonderful. And and I hope that uh, I hope our, our videos on the No CD uh, YouTube channel are helpful to people. Uh, and, and there's a lot of stuff on there. So if you have kind of specific questions about what ERP is, how it's utilized, uh, what are the themes of OCD, that you can see a lot there. And, and I know that this is a parent group. And so I just want to touch on one thing as well, too, is that Another way that OCD affects families is uh, perinatal OCD, which affects moms and dads. So we see it with, with moms very often due to the hormonal changes. I mean, hormonal issues in OCD are known even around uh, when a woman is having her period. Many report that their OCD symptoms are worse in, in at that point in time. We know that having a baby is a massive change in hormonal experience for a woman. And so that can lead to postpartum issues with OCD, but it can even be before the birth. So that's what we call it perinatal OCD. And it could be anything from, you know, what if, what if there's a germ and my baby gets sick to what if I myself were to harm or molest my child, that that can be a theme that we have. But I've treated dads with this as well too, who have very much been, you know, no one can touch our child, no one can, and now with COVID, no one's even allowed in our home or something of that nature to to such an extent where um, one dad got very angry at his wife because the gas man came to read the meter in the basement. And so she let him in and he walked into the basement, he read the meter and he left and and the dad came home and, you know, how was your day? Oh, well, the meter guy came and read the meter today. Did you have him put booties on his shoe? Well, no, I just let him go in the basement. Well, you know they use spray paint. What if he had spray paint on his shoe and now it's on the floor and now our child's crawling on the floor? Why didn't you just spray spray paint into our child's face? And that's when she said, I think you need some help. <laughs> you know, just uh, so I really want to make sure that everybody out there knows that the the birth experience can be a wonderful, joyful thing but it can be a horribly awful, harrowing, difficult experience for some people as well too. And, and I've gotten to the point where if I see somebody with a new child, I, I don't say, oh, isn't it wonderful? I say, how's it going? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Anything I can you know, help with or anything like that? Because I don't want to set up to somebody that having a baby is a wonderful experience because mm -hmm. there's a subset of people that it's not. And we have to be really careful when we set that expectation with people by saying, isn't this just great? Because there are some people who inside are saying, no, it's been awful. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's absolutely horrible. And I regret sometimes even having a child, right? And we have to be able to say to a person, thank you for sharing those feelings. I really appreciate that. And I want you to know that this is an open place to be able to share those, those experiences. And you don't have to hide that. And you don't have to be ashamed of that because that's not a shameful thing at all. Yeah, and this, that's a good point to bring up because there are a lot of parents out there, you know, OCD has a highly genetic component. And so yeah. a lot of the parents that are listening have their own struggles and need to yeah. know that there's help for them as well. And yeah. OCD provides therapy for for adults uh, any yep. age. And so it is a good thing to touch on. And many parents then will, will say to us as well too, is it my fault my child has OCD? Yes, I do hear that a lot. So. Mm -hmm. And knowing that it's, you know, it's genetic, you know, and that's just mm -hmm. part of the deal. Holly said you're recommended by people who are organizing her counseling. So that's good mm -hmm. to hear. Um, I just want to go through a couple more um, before we end. Sure. Make sure I answer everybody who has emailed me. Um, so we kind of went through a lot of these actually already. So Washington State. I actually think you have some providers in Washington <laughs> State. We, we have some people in Washington already. Yeah. And I think we've got a few more coming on board very soon. So. Uh, yep. Yeah. And Tiffany was asking about Virginia. Um, yep, we've got Virginia. Mm -hmm. Now, there may be some times where we have somebody in a state, but we might not have somebody who's child trained yet in that state. Yeah. So that's why we continue to seek out more providers and to bring people in because we really do leave it to our therapists. We don't mandate that our therapists have to see children if they're not mm -hmm. comfortable with it. We don't we don't want them seeing children if that's the right. case, right? We yeah. want people who are motivated and and willing to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's really good to just get on that list so that as you guys are expanding, you can get notified. Um, 
Yeah, because Anna was t- told that there are no providers for kids under 13 in Virginia yeah, at this that, point. That's That sounds about right right now. But um, I know I did an interview with somebody in Virginia just this week. So um, we'll see if if uh, we offer them and they accept and where, where we so go. It's um, always changing. So definitely. Always changing. Now always and, changing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michelle had asked about um, if it's not working out with a the therapist, which we already touched on, that that you can yeah. change. And Eustacia had asked about the screening process. And Jenny said, will you be getting more OCD therapists for kids in Texas? That's always the goal. Yeah. We, we, you know. <laughs> there was a lot of questions about wanting providers. Yeah. yeah. Um, those- so again, if you know providers who might be interested, please refer them over to NoCD. We would love to talk to them to see if they would want to join our network, do the training, get the supervision and be a part of, of this, this work because there's just not enough people out there who treat OCD or there's not enough people who treat OCD who take insurance or who specialize in kids. And so we, we, we want to add to the world uh, more providers who who take on this very significant debilitating disorder so that families and children don't have to suffer with this. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for making treatment accessible. Thank you for the whole team at NoCD for making treatment more accessible and affordable. I know in my own community, I'm starting to hear so many parents talking about their NoCD therapists and the progress. And so um, I just really appreciate what you're doing for for the OCD community. So awesome. thanks for coming on and answering questions. I know this has been really helpful for a lot yeah. of parents. Well, and if you ever want to do it again, just let me know. I'm happy to I'm happy to come back. I might take you up on that. All right. Okay. Take care. All right. Thanks. Bye.